Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm back with the number one best-selling pan on Amazon. And I paid under 20 bucks for this one. Is it the number one bestseller because it's cheap or because it's good or both? I've been using this for about three weeks now and I have an answer for you. But let's flash back to day one when I first unboxed it. Let's take a look at the Sensart Non-Stick Skillet. I paid 18 bucks for this. It's currently the number one best-selling pan on Amazon. It comes in sizes from eight to 12 and a half inches. So the handle comes separately and they even give you a screwdriver. That's kind of nice. All right, before I go over the uh, details, let me put this handle on here. Handle is attached easy enough. It's a nice looking handle. Now they say it has a stainless steel base that makes it suitable for all stoves, including induction cooktops. Wood grain handle stays cool. Oven safe up to 302 degrees Fahrenheit. They say it has a nonstick surface that is easy to wipe clean. My big problem was how to pronounce it. Half the people out there call it Sensarte, some people say it's Sensart. Based on their website, it's supposedly a combination of the words sense and art, so I'm saying Sensart. Hopefully that's right. Some pretty minimal instructions here though, but I'm gonna look these over, clean this off, and then get started. All right, so I've washed it off, I'm ready to get started. I wanna go over these instructions carefully, and, I, and they're not very well written. Most of the things in the instructions are pretty basic, but a few things aren't worded very well. They say to clean it off with a soft towel or sponge. I've done that. For best nonstick performance, please add at least a spoon of oil before each use. They mean a teaspoon, a tablespoon, a, a ladle. They don't say what kind of spoon. I'm going to assume maybe a teaspoon. Do not heat up empty cooking utensils. No empty cooking utensils, huh? Well, they, what they mean is that there's something in the pan before you actually use it. They don't mean utensil, they mean the pan. The rest of the instructions are pretty basic. They say don't use it on high heat. Stay away from metal utensils. Don't use steel wool. Don't pour cold water in a hot pan. Hand wash. Handle with care and uh, use gloves when you're handling it. Now they say for best performance, to use a spoon of oil, but I have to try out the nonstick surface without some first. So my first test or two, I'm gonna try out no oil and then we'll add some oil and check it out from there. Let's try doing a pancake with no butter or oil in the bottom of the pan. And we'll see how that releases once it's uh, heated up. I'm just curious how this is gonna release. Let's take a peek underneath here. Oh yeah, look at that, very nicely released. I don't know if it's ready to flip yet, but it really, look at that, it's just sliding around. Let's just slip it anyways. Wow, that was a perfect release and there was no oil or butter in there at all. Not bad. All right, this is how they look without any oil or butter, which is pretty good. Let's try it with some oil and see how that turns out. You can see the level of brownness is a little bit different with the oil compared to no oil, but still, honestly, I'm still kind of impressed either way. So looking pretty good. I'm trying a double sized pancake to see how that goes in here. Let's go for the flip. N nice. So far, I'm liking this pan. We got a long ways to go, but my first impressions are pretty good. All right, well, then this is the last one. So uh, let's look at what we got here. Here's the, the final batch of pancakes, looking pretty good. Um, everything came out of there easily, so I'm pretty happy with it. Next up, I wanted to try some scrambled eggs because that's good to test the nonstick surface and to test the cleanup process after that sat there for a while. All right, I've got this warming up. I put a very light layer of oil in there, spread it around with a paper towel. Let's see the thermal imager and see how even this looks. There is the, uh, the heat and distribution from the thermal imager. Looks like we're anywhere from 213 degrees in the hottest part. And this is a burner set on three. So I'm just gonna kinda let that sit and see how it does. What's it releasing pretty nicely. Releasing pretty nicely. Of course, there's a little bit of oil on the bottom, but that's a pretty nice release. All right, let's see, these are, these are done now. All right, so I'm gonna let this cool completely and then I'll wash it off and see how well it washes off once it's cool with eggs stuck in there. Here we go, it's been cooled off, let's check it out. Oh wow, most of the egg just came right off in the, the warm soapy water. I haven't even scrubbed it yet, wow. It, I literally did not scrub it and all the egg came off. Uh, that's, a, that's an impressive first start. All right, well, so far so good, wow. Next up, I wanted to try just cracking an egg into the pan with no butter or oil and it didn't really go that well. But I tried it again with a little bit of oil and it wasn't so bad. Let's just take a peek and see if this will release at all. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, that's not releasing very well. Uh-oh, we have a problem here. I probably should put some oil in there. Oh man. Well, I, I maybe I pushed it too far. I don't know. 
Uh, this is gonna be, is gonna be a disaster. Let me try this again with some oil because I that's already clearly not gonna work. Not good. I got my egg going. I put a little bit of oil in the bottom before I started. Let's see if it actually slides around. Oh my God, we got part of it sliding around. Let's see here. Oh, it is sliding. It is sliding. It is definitely sliding around. That's good. Now, something I use my pans for on a regular basis are grilled cheese sandwiches. I tried that and here's how that went. All right, it's time for a little grilled cheese sandwich. The pan has been preheated. Got a nice sizzle here. Let's uh, see how even the bread turns out and how crispy and golden brown we can get it. So I'll check back when the sandwich is ready to flip and see how it goes. Now I didn't put any oil or butter in the pan, but the bread has butter on it, so we don't, don't really need it. All right, let's, uh, let's flip this and see how it looks. And, oh, pretty nice, pretty nice. I would say that's certainly an acceptable grilled cheese sandwich. Let's try the other side now, see what we got. Very nice, slides around easily, so, so. I mean, this wasn't a very difficult test, but it came out pretty nice. Now, not all nonstick pans do a good job with meat. So I tried a couple of small steaks and here's how that went. Nice sizzle, nice sizzle. Now, I just put a very light layer of oil in the bottom of this pan here. I'm gonna add some butter a little bit later. Here's what we got so far. So uh, looking pretty good. Steak is sliding around nice, very nicely in here. So that's good. Ah, oh, nice, very nice. And add a little bit of butter here. So far, the steak is looking good. Uh, I'll be curious how that butter cleans up as well, but I'm liking what I see so far. Let me take this out of here. There's side two, looking pretty good. I'll let this rest for a few minutes and then cut it open. While we're doing that, I have a second steak to make. Let's uh, cut this steak open now. Nice crust on the outside, nice and pink inside, so I think it came out pretty good. All right, this one's ready to come out. We'll let it rest and see how it turned out as well. Nice crust on the outside, nice pink inside. This turned out pretty nice too. I gotta run it for a few hours. I'm gonna let this sit completely cool down and see how well this cleans up. For my final test, I wanted to try something that I've had a lot of problems with sticking in the bottom of pots and pans in the past, and that's my special bean dip, and here's what happened. All right, next up, I'm gonna do my favorite dip but one of my least favorite things to clean if I don't clean the pan right away. Can of refried beans, big old glob of sour cream, big old handful of shredded cheese, couple dashes of uh, Frank's Red Hot in there. Now you're not supposed to use metal utensils in here, so I use this. Uh, I use this wooden spoon. All I really have to do is just warm this up, and it's good to go. So I'll check back with you in just a minute. All right, this is uh, good to go, and I can tell just from stirring this that the, the pan is not sticking to the pan, which some. In some cases it does, it is not sticking right here. Now this is a really good dip for uh, burritos or just as a chip dip. I like to uh, test to make sure it's done by just putting a, a chip in there and taking a bite. That's done. All right, so I, what I've done is not gone out of my way to scrape this. I've left as much residue as I can in there. I'm gonna let that cool. If you rinse it out right away, it's not a problem, but when that hardens, it can become a, a real hassle to clean up. So I'm gonna let this sit for several hours and come back and see how well it cleans up. All right, it's been about two hours. It looks like it didn't really uh, stick to the bottom. Look at that. I mean, it looks like normally this would stick really bad to the edges. This is coming right off. Look at this. Very impressive, I must say, but let's, uh, let's clean this off properly and see how it looks. Dunking it in the water. Uh, it, just, it, did, it just didn't stick. It just came right off. Very impressive results in every test I've thrown at it. So in the end, I would say this pan is number one bestseller because it's cheap and because it's good. I've been using this for several weeks, including things I haven't even shown you on camera. It's easily as good as some of the more expensive nonstick pans that I've tried. They're two, three, four times the cost. I really don't have anything bad to say about this one. I think it's a really good pan. I can see why it's the bestseller because it's good and it's cheap. But if you've tried the Sinsart pan or something like it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.